Well, good morning. How are you? Welcome back to the workshop. I'm Steve Hay. This is Woodworking Masterclass. And for some reason or other, I don't know why, but my Facebook post has gone all gaga. So you're just going to have to hang in there if you wouldn't mind indulging me for a second so I can try and work this out because it hasn't updated. Oh, no, 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 it has, but it hasn't. I don't think. Wait, no, let me just put a new photo in here. That's what I need to do, I think. So I'll just run in, in, delete that one. All right, that's deleted. So now I'm going to put another one in. There we go. I just, I just. 23rd, 24th. There we go. I just got to get a new photo to put in. Ah, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. Hello, Bob. How are you, mate? You just come in for a bludge, didn't you? I can tell. I can really tell. Um, I might put you up there. Do you want it? There we go. There you go, Bob. You can be a star. You can go. You can go onto YouTube and be the face. It's not happening. Oh, there we go. Now we will post it, and we should be good to go. It's a bit slow today. I don't know why, but it is. I thought I was spot on. Have I got? Have I got sound? I think I have. Let me double check. Out the way, mate. Out the way. There you go. Oh, one, two. Oh, I've got sounds. Everything's looking good. Let me see if I can get the chat up, and then we all should be. Oh, look at that. We're away. Ray, good morning. Hang on. Let me take my last mouthful. Mmm. See, I'm even up to date, got me brekkie into me. Oh, dear. So, Ray, good morning. Chad, good morning. Lickers, hello. T Bone, good Oh, T Bone, where, where? I bought that. I did. I did bought it down. I don't know what I did with it. Mmm. Wait a moment, no. You want to go out again? Go on. All right. Yeah, I don't know what I did, but I bought, oh, there it is. That's, I haven't used it yet, so I don't know how it's going to go, but that's the brand I got made up. So it's pretty deep. So... If you like, give some thought to what I offered. T-Bone knows what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter about anyone else. Uh, well, it does. You all matter. You all matter. How come? Look, I, oh no. I should be standing there. But I'm not. I think the bench has moved. That's what's happened. So if I move that way, I've got to move that way. I've got to push my bench up that way a bit. Wait a minute. That's what. That's what's happened. That's it. I'm there now. So I had everything else central, but it just puts me off when I'm not where I'm meant to be. Ah, oh, dear. Um, ba Trevor, good day, mate. How are you? Good day, Devin. Paul, good morning. <coughs> it's most likely mandatory, Ray. It's not that he's allowed back on the internet. It's that way she can keep an eye on him. Ooh. Put that over there. Bob doesn't trip over it. Ah, Clinton, good day, mate. How are you, mate? Pleased to have you in the workshop. You don't see Brecky? Oh, I see Brecky. Oh, I don't see Brecky. Oh. Flicks through that. Uh, oh, no, no. I just scoffed it. 
Craig, good morning. How are you? Oh, call me Steve for goodness sake. Good, oh, good morning. Welcome to the workshop. Oh, good stuff. Clean up the old decking boards. Are you? Are they the ones you want to make some stuff out of? Are they? Are they the mahogany ones? Oh, that's good. I'm pleased I've got sound. She gave me an attitude adjustment in the middle of the night last night, Ray. And I got underpants on this morning. Well, there you go. Oh, tell your story. <coughs> Speaking of attitude adjustment. <laughs> when I was working in the jail running a workshop, uh, that ma many of you know that's what I did for a couple of years, we had one of the workers come in and young fella, bit of a mouth on him, and um, he had this huge bump on his head, massive a goose egg. Anyway, you know, you don't sort of say anything like that. <laughs> that happens inside jails. And one of the screws, well, prison officers, sorry, one of the screws came up to me and he said, have you seen so-and-so lately? I said, yeah. He said, you seen what's on his head? I said, yeah, it's a ripper, that is. It's like a goose egg. <laughs> and the screw says to me, do you know what it's called? I said, no. He said, a change of attitude knob. <laughs> so there you go. Someone put a lump of sock and a soap, a lump of soap and a sock and bang, change of attitude knob. Don't we wish we could do that to some people? But not allowed. Gotta be nice. Gotta be nice. Uh, Bob's a star, so right you are. That, oh, that's a poet and you don't know it. Uh, or perhaps if you get in the stew, perhaps you do. I don't know. Good morning, Your Highness. How are you? I trust you are well and suffering no ill effects of your sojourn in the hospital environment and you're back on deck. Morning, Brian. Morning, Louise. I'm going to get Sue to ring you because I'm hopeless at it. Well, when she comes down, if I don't remember, you remind me and she can ring you up. <clears throat> no, the camera, the camera stays there and I've got a line-up that I do with the screen that I use. And I was in the centre, but my bench wasn't in the centre. So that moved me bench. There you go. I see you spent the day in the shop. Got a new plane sharp as I showed you. Yes, Mike. Very proud of you. Thank you so much for that. Two thumbs up. I got a, a lovely email from Mike yesterday. With a, was that a sweetheart? It looked like one of the new sweethearts. Um, that plane thing we did that Randy asked for. Um, and Mike went and got his number four and followed the procedure and it is now planing like a dream, taking nice thin ribbons of timber off, which is what we want to do. Another day of interesting in things. Oh, speaking of which, look, I'm going to apologise in advance. Yesterday, I don't think I was here. I, I have been getting extremely... Extremely tired, and I'm not complaining by any means. Wife most likely will, but I won't. And um, yeah, I, I left here when we finished the stream about half twelve, one o'clock. I went and laid down. I thought I'll just have a quick little nanny nap, and I woke up at quarter to five. And then last night I was having dinner, which was tacos. Oh yeah. I had six of them. I was, I had the munchies. And at about uh, 10 to 8, I think it was, because I came down here for a couple of hours to do some work, I said, so, oh, look, I'm tired, darling. I'm going to bed. And I woke up at 10 to 9. So she said, you got to cut back on the streaming. I said, no. I promised I was going to do it, and I'm going to do it. And she said, well, can you maybe make them a little bit shorter? So I'll see how I go today, um, but that's the state of affairs. So every chance I'm going to get chewed out live. <laughs> oh dear. 
But yeah, my apologies for yesterday. I just didn't seem to be on the planet. I thought I was until I woke up and I, I came down here as I usually do and then just catch up and do a little bit more work. And those, what were, the mortise I did was in the wrong place. Uh, I'd picked the wrong side of the timber and oh, it was just, it was a, it was a disaster. So I had to re, um, redo all the, the mortises and line them up, but I've got it all glued up and together and we can do some more work on that. Let's clean all this stuff up here. And then I thought I might get in and do a bit, <coughs> a bit more of the boxes, just sanding the bottom side. I, I don't want to do too much stuff today I have to think about. Oh, and I finished, um, for those of you who are watching, I, uh, you know, I went to sharpen this. <laughs> That's scary. That's <laughs> My. <laughs> oh, dear. My paring chisel, right there hanging up on the wall. Yesterday when I came down, I looked at the wall and it wasn't there. I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere for it and I thought, oh, it's got to be on the floor or something. And I come back and it's, it's on the, that's how tired I was. Anyway, look, what I did, <coughs> those of you who got Tormex or similar wet wheels, yesterday when I tried to put my mortise chisel into this. It wouldn't fit and I said, oh, there's another way I can do it. This is the one. This is a very early carving uh, tool holder. But same thing applies, you just pop it in there. It will self-center pretty much. And then you use the bottom fence here and you do it that way. And there you go. So luckily, <clears throat> I had that nice and sharp. So I'll finish the rest of those mortises off. I just can't believe that about the pairing chisel. Pairing chisel, my goodness. So I, I said I'll, we'll do things I don't have to think about. I've got glue all over the flipping bench. And I wet down, I wet down the cabinet and the lining boards yesterday. So we're going to have to give those a bit of a sand. Just, there shouldn't be much, but there is just a little bit of um, fibres come up. So we'll knock that off with a bit of 180, I think. So I've got that there. I'm going to change the filter in my... Sanding extractor, I think. And then we can measure the doors up. I don't think I'll be doing much work on them today. And we might, if we can get these, I'll sand these off, wet them again, sand them off again. That's the template I roughly drew up yesterday. So that's going to, we'll make a, a proper template for that using... Um, plywood so we can do the sides when we get to that stage and I, I found another bench dog that I haven't seen for a while so that was nice it was on the floor oh. I'm gonna get around to fixing the plastic compressor that's gonna be a job for this week. A lot of jobs for this week. So I might as well get put off till next week. <clears throat> oh dear. All right. So where did I get up to? Another day of interesting things. I diverged from that, didn't I?
<coughs> a zombie friendly environment. It's always nice to find tools that you didn't get. It's better to find them before you rebuy them. Okay. Well, I think, first of all, oh, if I can get this horrible thing out. I don't know if I can or not. I've got to... Oh, yeah. I think my um, sanding thing might be full. So, oh! I'll just get this up here. Got to work out how to open this stupid thing. Aha, there we go. That goes there. Well, there we go. Sort of. Oh, you idiot. Got that connected. There we go. Pop that there. Oh, that's no wonder. It didn't feel like it was it was throwing stuff back at me. Oh, it's a muck in there. The um. Sanding bag is El Choco. Look at that. <laughs> That's absolutely chockers. Full of, that's like a brick. Full of sanding dust. So it does do its job. We'll put another one in there. <clears throat> Well, there's been some cockroaches living in there. Okay. So this goes up under there. And that goes in there. And that can go in there. I'll just empty this out. That's not bad. <laughs> That bag has lasted me for a couple of years. So, mustn't complain. Go. All ready to go again for another couple of years. If I had a compressor, I'd blow it out. But I don't. So I won't. Does that mean it fit in there? Oh, it does too. How clever is that? <clears throat> and that can go around like that. Or we can expect far better results now. <clears throat> I'm thinking. Yeah. 
Let's just see if it still works. Can't see why it wouldn't. Ah, oh, yes. Excellent. Another maintenance job done. And Susie's decided she likes the dark oak stain, which I must admit I do too. So we're going to stain with this cabinet. Hence, one of the reasons for. Um, wetting everything and then sanding it back because when you wet something the, if there's any grain there it'll rise up and then when you sand it back you'll cut that back wet it again it'll rise up again knock it back it'll rise up until eventually you don't get any grain rise then when you put your stain on it stays there whereas if you don't go through this process you put the stain on the graze is going to the grain is going to rise up. You rub the grain back. You also rub through the stain. So, there you go. Morning, Jared. Morning, Mark. We're all good, thank you. I haven't used that for a while. I, well, I've used it, but I haven't pulled it apart and had a look at it. <laughs> I think you're right there. Well, it was full of... There's a fair bit of cocky poo in there too. Oh, I was on the outside. I wasn't in the mechanism, so that's good. That's what it is. Good morning, Ian. Welcome into the workshop once more. That's lovely, that is, Jeff. It's good to have a good zoos, isn't it? Brunella? Susie went and bought some Tim Tams yesterday, so she was right this morning. Although my son had to make a cup of tea because I was still asleep at 9 o'clock, so I've been, I've been awake for just over an hour. I know what you mean, Prunelli. You get a good sleep, it's good. <clears throat> oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, T-Bone. Good morning, Stephen. How are you, mate? Okay. So I'm going to rub these back again. I think I'll use... What have you got? 180 on here. Let me have a look see. Oh! No. 100. I want some 180. I think this is 180 here. That's the stuff. And then we'll pull the frame to bits. We'll have a look at that. Uh. 
And I've got to tidy up the shed a little bit because I can't find half the stuff. Oh, that's sucking much better. I'll do the um, tongues by hand because if I put <coughs> if I put this in here too hard, it knocks that about, which I don't want. Plane them like we plane those, you do minimise the grain raise, and in most cases you eradicate it. But sometimes you just get the odd bit coming up, so I thought, well, we might as well make sure that we get it all. Got some bits in here where I got grain tear out, and even with Terry's planes, I couldn't get down far enough without substantially changing the dimension of the board. And that's another reason I'm going to sand that frame. When we take it out, we'll, what I'll do, we'll do this. I'll give them a Quick little wet again, and then while they're drying, we'll pull the frame out that we made yesterday and sand that, then give it a wet. And sand it again, uh, as well as the carcass. The carcass is almost Ready. Looks like I missed that one all together. <clears throat> Ready to um, start staining. 
And we might even get these boards fitted to the back of the cabinet. Order. Must have missed it as well. Now I can't put the front of the cabinet on until I've got, I've got that middle shelf in. So we have to do that one too. I've said before many times, don't be frightened about putting water near timber. Because that's what it grows on. But look, oh, don't get it wet, don't get it wet. And if you were to throw these in a bucket of water, providing both sides got wet, again, that wouldn't really matter. What I... Um, now, I'll tell you what I'll do first. I'm going to take these really sharp edges off. Uh, what have I got? Some 150 there. I hope that's 150. 180. Oh, yeah, 180 might do. What's that? That's, could be 150. And I'm going to try and do this without getting splinters. Splinters aren't fun either. So all I'm doing is just going to arrest this edge. I could use a plane, but quite frankly, it's just going to be just as quick to do that. And that's just taking that really sharp edge off and also this edge here. Nothing too dramatic, but just takes it off because... These are the two edges that are going to be exposed at the back of the cabinet. This edge and this edge. And, yeah, just doesn't feel nice doing that. So it should only take a couple of secs. Where are we up to? Michael! Good morning! And Randy, good day! Oh. Well, you've got to you've got to replace you've got to replace um, liquids, Stephen. You've got to replace liquids. So, if you go into town and buy a coffee, I think that's quite legitimate. <clears throat> well, I'm going to do the same myself today. I think I'll go for a walk up to the coffee shop, which is 600 metres. In fact, I think I burn more calories jumping over the fence than I do actually walking the 600 metres. I'm excited about this cabinet. I don't know why. There's some jobs you do it and it's, oh, yeah, right, uh. And there's other jobs, oh, gee, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be nice. This is one of they... So yeah, yesterday, Susie's sewing was don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try. Which to me, it's muddled English, but what it means is don't be afraid to fail. It should be don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to try. So I guess... Be afraid not to try. Yeah, that's the sort of that sort of evens it out. 
But after yesterday, when I came down, I realised I'd done all that <coughs> stuff. <laughs> and it was all wrong. I thought, well, there you go, we can fix it. And more importantly, I, I will tell all you good people out there that I stuffed up big time. But all fixed now. And if no one watches this stream and you don't tell, no one will know. Three to go. <coughs> Excuse I. And these are th these are things. What I'm doing now. These are things machines can't do. Yeah, sure. I'm not saying they can't sand, but they can't put the eye over it and judge whether it's right or not. It's just, they've done a job, that's it, end of story. Oh, here comes the boss. Hello, my darling. Hello, my dear. No, no, I, I, just, I just told everyone that you rousted on me yesterday, you went crook, and, and they all, they didn't say anything, actually. <laughs> she did, she got stuck into me like Bob into an apple pie. Yes. You've seen that he look. He was so tired. He slept for 14 hours. Well, Prunella slept for 15. Yeah, well. Why? <laughs> she's got. Prunella's not my concern. I love her, but I don't have to put up with her when he's cranky, when he's short tempered, when he's stressed out. When it, he's a pain in the tush. Oh, you didn't have to really. I'm going to come and live with you, Trevor. Because it sounds like. Your Trevor's she's might, wife might be more honest. You, I was going to say your she's not as not as bad as my she. <laughs> now nah, it's all good. Well, this lesson <laughs> is as much for you as it for, is for everybody else. Is that right? I've just realised I've got to do. Have I done that? I've done it. I haven't done this one. Yeah, what is it? What listen listen to bossy boots? What is it? Let That's me. That's possible. But I married you. That wasn't a mistake. <laughs> well. Here we go. Here's Susie's message to me. And anyone else said it. And it ties in nicely with yesterday's, didn't it? Yes. Doesn't it? Yes. There you go. I'll get that out of the way. Forget the mistake. Remember the lesson. How good's that? Forget the mistake. Remember the lesson. And, and I'm supposing... If you remember the lesson, you don't make the mistook again. Well, as long as we learn from our mistakes. Are you going through an army drab state? Look at that. Oh, listen, while you're here, before I go, I'm going to give you my phone. Yeah. You ring Louise up. Yeah. See, I'm passing the buck, Louise. Um, we'll find a number now. Little boom. There we go. Um, I just make sure I got the right one. Does it end in 917? Louise, your number ends in 917 because I've got a, oh, what is she? A niece. Yeah. I've got a niece called Louise. I just want to make sure I've got your number, not hers, because if Sue rings up Lou and goes, oh, what do you want? She goes, what are you talking about? You've lost it, Auntie Sue. <laughs> oh, look, look at Stephen, man after my own heart. Just walked into town and back for a bit of exercise. We were allowed to go out for exercise. It was really to get a coffee. I'm going to do that. I'm going to walk up and get a coffee. Yep. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I might walk up to the car and drive around and get a coffee. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hey, good day. Oh, Mike. I know I thought there was a different Mike. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> There's obviously two Mikes over in uh, Michael's in, in um, New Zealand. 
G'day, Julia. No, you're not too late. You just missed a roasting from the missus. Oh, no, you must leave cop that because I'm behind in the chat. Oh, dear. Okay, so you accents. Uh, Tommy can be right there. Well, just flip them over, mate. I'll sharpen them for you. Um. Good morning, everyone. I, that's what I'm getting to. I'm, mm. I'm getting because I, I got sidetracked. Trevor got Tim Tams. You got Tim Tams, but I did. son had to make it for you because I was CP. Yeah. <sighs> My next shopping trip for essentials, chopped chips. So we have homemade famous chopped chips. Well, that's good. Five hours time. I couldn't go. F oh, no, I can't go five hours without chocolate if I'm asleep. Yeah. Mmm. Hi Sue, hi Sue, so Prunella and Mike and Brian and Ray and James and Trevor and Louise. Is she'll ring you, Louise? Pomus. Julian say hi. Life is too short to buy cheap wine and cheap chocolate. That's true. Wise words. No, no, there's T-bone was wise words. <laughs> Sue's suspenseful saying of the day. Sue's saying tomorrow, don't be a pain in the tush, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> T-Bone, we're friends, mate. <laughs> well said, Sue, well said. Noise, hi, Sue. Lucas says, hi, Sue. Ian says, hi, Sue. Oh, OK, Louise, gotcha. Right, that's it. We're up to there. Driving's just a way of motorising walk. It is, because you... In fact, I reckon you do more exercises getting in and out of a car, especially in your little sports car. Yeah. Because your tummy muscles get a workout, your backside gets a workout, and everything. Because you've got to get down, and then you've got to get out again. That's what happened when you're over 50 and you have a sports car. Well, I was... When did I buy it? 2006. 16 40, years I, ago. And all right, what did I buy it for? Anthony. Yeah, my little two-year-old grandson. To take him for ice creams. So he'd get a laugh in his life, because yeah. up until then he hadn't had many laughs in his life. And when we told him recently, <laughs> Sue said, did you know Papa bought that sports car for you? Really? Is that mine? No, 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 no. You said it wrong, didn't you? I did. You should. <laughs> <coughs> No. Sue said it Luke, first. Luke has first dibs. Yeah, no, it's Luke's car. It's no. not. It's not. Are you watching, Lukey? There you go. He's probably still asleep. <coughs> he could be. No, he, no, he's working on it. Where's Steve? Steve, are you watching, Steve? Or would they be asleep too? No, no, no. Uh, so don't, don't forget, he gets the car, but you get that one, all right? Oh, it's not even sparkling. Oh, yes, it is. A little bit. That, that's for me sons in case they start fighting. Uh, here's the saying for tomorrow, if it's a mistake, throw it in the chuck it bucket. <laughs> Mate, if I did that, I'd have no furniture in my house. Oh, T-bone saying, not... Oh, OK. Sue's saying tomorrow, don't be... A... Oh, I can now, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it now. So, no, what I'm going to do, I'll... I'll... Learn from lessons instead of mistakes? No, you mm. learn from your mistakes. No, you don't. You learn from your missus giving you a hard time. <laughs> and that ain't going to change. No, it better not, neither. How's your back? <coughs> can I, I do itchy. that? Yeah, she can yeah but it. no, it's... it's... I'll be pleased tomorrow when I get stitches out. It's still going to itch. Oh, she's only pleased because she goes and sees mm. Dr Matt. Oh. Well, you tell me. Ladies, Prunella, whatever, you've got a very gorgeous, tall, slim doctor who thinks, who I think is wonderful. And, you know, he just tells us all this stuff. And he's adorable and he gives me a hug. Oh, there, there you go, you've got it. Now, he's a good looking rooster. He gives her a hug and she loved she she went to him one day true story as sure as i'm knitting a jumper out of cement this is true <laughs> she she said i've got to go and see dr matt and when she went in there he said what's wrong she said look i really don't know but every time i go here i go weak in the knees what's the cause from <laughs> you are 
story. It's called From Walking 12 Miles to Come and See Me. <laughs> oh dear, I love you too much. All right, okay, so when can I stream till? 12. 12. All right. If you're lucky, one minute past 12, I'll be back here. I will put that to the test. Oh, here. Two. Here, one. No. <laughs> no, that's a. I'm joking, I'm fun, but I'm serious. Mm. If you want to be fed tonight and you want a nice wife. What can I change? <laughs> Quick, Louise, answer the damn phone. Yeah, they, they get me out of trouble. Talk to Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that a great way of getting rid of your wife? <laughs> oh, I love you, darling. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. G'day, Ben. How are, How are you? Oh, do you have an MGTD? Oh, yeah, no, they're nice. I had a friend in Sydney that used to do repairs. Now, the TD, I think that was the TC, was the same. They had uh, timber subframes from memory. Is that correct, Trevor? Yeah, the imported ones used to be European Beach. And um, Phil used to make, or get them made, um, but the running frames were made out of coachwood in Australia. There's a bit of trivia for MG buffs, if there are any out there. Oh, dear. No, nah, James, no, that's that's technique. Well, Steve, at least you give Sue a hug. That was technique. That was so her arms were locked so she couldn't king hit me. <laughs> oh, dear, I don't know. Yeah, I reckon then I should, shouldn't I? Oh, G'day, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to the chat room, mate. Oh, dear. See, it was... <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. There's me thinking I had the chat room on my side. Yeah, good on me. Ah. Uh, singer Sports. Um, singer Sports, Singer Sports. Was that, did that end up coming out of the Roots Company? Was that part of the Hillman, Hillman um, uh, stable of cars? Singer. What was there? They, they bought a sports car out. Oh, no, it might have been an Alpine, um, Hillman Alpine. That was pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. Uh, don't, spo <laughs> don't spoil the look. No, mate, don't go against it, for goodness sake. I'm restringing my guitar. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, good on you, team, mate. <laughs> well, just don't snap your G-string. That's the one. I've got a 12-string, and... My upper E, no, I don't seem to break that, but the G string on the 12, the light G string, yeah, twang. <laughs> We're in the same boat, Brian, that's good to see. You do, you do, Brunella, you sure do. Okay, so I've done those, I'll move that because I'm going to bring in. That's the only thing you don't want to introduce water to is MDF because you'll end up with twice as much as you started with. Okay, so I'm just gonna get me squirt bottle going. Oh, that's all it is. Just a quick squirt like that. I'll do it in front of the Camaruka. Who's an old Sydneyite that can remember the ferry called the Camaruka? They used to do the um, local runs around Mossman and Neutral Bay. Let's I'll pull the camera on you, idiot. There you go. So I'm not larruping on, I'm just quick squirt. That is all that is needed. Actually, I'll tell you what, that colour I'm going to do, it's... I was going to stain it, but when you look at the colour, it's, it's not bad. Ba -da -ba.
That really is a nice warm colour, I like that. No, not even Bob's game to go up. He knows I've got no food. He finished all the licorice up last night. <coughs> and he's not game to go up to the house. Good. Well, there you go. All right, that, that was the stain that I was using. So just a little bit, a little bit browner. I don't know, what's that like with a bit of H2 on it? I don't know. Which do you like, the stained one or the plain one? All right, I'm going to go and lie these down so they evaporate quick. Then I'll get the frame out of the clamps that I did last night. Oh, I'm just going to lay these down face up over here. And then when these are dry, which should be in not too long a time, I'll knock that off with 240. And um, then, oh dear, oh. and then if we go with the stain, we'll stain it. Oh. There you go. Oh. Let's, let's, let's hope it stayed square. Um, but um, but don't spoil the look of watching restringing and says catch a bee, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. It's only it's only it's not even a eighth of a turn and twang she's gone. G'day Scott again. No, I've said good day, Scott, haven't I? Ah uh, yeah, it is a nice colour, I must admit. The water I'm spraying on there, uh, six knots or Ben, is because I'm gonna or was gonna stain it, and if it's got any grain, loose grain, we planed all that, but sometimes still you get a little bit of grain. Put water on it, and the grain stands up, and then I sand it back, which is what I just did then with 180. I sprayed it again, and then we'll feel it. And if it's got still more grain, I'll knock that off with a, a bit of 240. And then we spray it again, and we shouldn't have any grain coming up, which means when I put the um, stain on, the grain won't come up, so it'll be nice and flat. Because what happens if you put stain on and then you get grain rise, then you sand the, the grain off, you also diminish the colour underneath. So what I've done here is, if you can see, I've got paper underneath underneath the clamps because I cleaned all the glue off and if I'd left this wet and put these steel clamps on it I would have black marks going all the way up it will got a little bit there oh yeah that's not too bad I'll show you what I mean we'll just take these off and oh I'll put them away while I think of it. Oh dear. Oh. All right. Well, that wasn't very nice. The slide fell out. I'm gonna put a pin in there. Oh dear. Oh. Gee, I wish I bought some more of these clamps when I bought those. But it was about. 25 years ago, don't make them anymore. Okay, so there you can see a little bit of water got underneath and it's gone black. And 
the same on this side. It's just a little, it'll come out. Oh, up the top's a bit there you go going as well. But if I hadn't had that paper, that would be all the way along. Let's see how straight it is. It should be oh, it's pretty straight. It's a bit of a kink in that, actually, which I'm not happy with. But it'll be all right, I think. So we'll throw those away. And we'll check, see if it's square. I don't know if I want to do this one live. <laughs> yeah, come on, be brave. It's, it's a little <laughs> I'm a masochist, I really am. Here we go. Top one. Oh, there you go. That's pretty square. Bottom one. Not going to lose any sleep over that either. What a bum. Well, I've got to say, I'm very happy with that. And the last one. Okay, another way to check things for square, if you don't have a square that's big enough to do that, if you get a measuring tape, providing everything's the same width, if I measure from here, this corner here, down to this corner, and that is uh, oh, just a little bit over, just under. It's about two mil under or one mil under 960 there. Now, if you measure it from this side, you should have the same measurement. And it is. Look at that. See, just in case. Oh, I know there could be some doubting Thomases out there. There you go. There. And there. So then I know it's square, which is good. A little bit here to plane off at the top, but I think I'll do that on a joint and then we'll run a blocky over. And I'm just going to sand all this back. So for that, I'm going to use 100 grit and we'll get it all nice and flat. Clean all these. Oh, shaving's up soon, dude. I'm starting to be ankle deep in Oh! Where's some hundred? Give me some hundred. Is that hundred? That'll do. That's hundred. I'm trying to use all this, this particular brand up because I hate it. So if I use it up, I won't have to worry about it.
turn. Horrible paper, this just wears out too quickly. <clears throat> now, as I said before, I've got um, pencil marks up here. So you're better off to rub the pencil marks out than try and sand them out because as you sand, you're just pushing the graphite deeper and deeper into the timber and you end up with dips in the timber. You want to go out, Bob? Okay. Go on, mate. There you go. There's a good boy. And I think that squirt bottle must have a hole in it. So when I've finished here, I think we can chuck it in the bin. This is the back side of the frame, so you don't have to be as particular, but it's still good to have it flat. flat all the way around. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is just take the nasty sharp edges off here. We'll just do that with a bit of whatever. It doesn't really matter. You don't want too uh, aggressive a piece of paper. This is 120 or 150, I think. Uh, this part here, I've got a knot here, but I'm going to cut an arch in the bottom of that. And also that design that I did, the reason these are still square is because when I'm clamping, when I'm clamping it up, I've got a flat surface to clamp on all the way around. Then once it's been clamped, 
then you can cut out your sides and put that profile in because that is too hard to clamp when you've got a round edge here and a bit of a curve here on the top. So be mindful of that. If you're making something, you're going to have fancy sides on it. Glue it up square and then put your profiles on afterwards. Makes for such a much easier life. So all I'm doing here is just arrison the insides. No biggie. Just knocking that really hard, sharp edge off. Now you might have noticed I'm doing the inside of here, but I didn't do the inside of this one. That's because the inside of this is actually going to be on the half of the bottom shelf. So I want that to be nice and sharp. I don't want that roll, rolled over. But the other ones, this is where the door styles are going to fit and the door head. So I'm cleaning the inside of those. These are all just little things you... You actually don't think of, um, at least I don't, until I'm actually talking to people and then you go, oh yeah, well that's the reason I do that because they might wonder why you did that and you didn't do that and what have you. Because I like a cabinet that no matter where you touch, it doesn't have any sharp, horrible edges. Okay, so that's sharp, that's, those two aren't, those two aren't, those two aren't, that outside one's nice. This, I'm not going to bother about doing this because I'm going to be, uh, where are we? Yeah, I'm not going to bother about taking it off of here or here yet because we've got some shapes to do on that. So just to give you a look-see what it'll look like, bring that cabinet up, actually we we might um, oh, wet this cabinet down as well. <clears throat> okay. So, let me see. There you go. Oh. Okay, <laughs> you can see I got halfway through doing these and then I realised I did them wrong. But that's how that's going to fit on and then we'll shape this. So all those ones I cut there, we're going to lose those anyway. So we'll have that shape on both sides. And then an arch here and two doors here. And I'm thinking with the doors, um, I'm going to have a, a, a glazing bar coming across there and one down there. So we'll have three sections in the doors. But I think we'll give this a wet down. And we might give the cabinet a bit of a wet down. And then we'll see what else we can come up with. And again, I'm just doing this to raise the grain for no other reason. And it doesn't take very much water at all. With oak particularly, make sure you don't have anything metal. So I'll see. Oh, we'll see if we can find a bit and we can do a... There you go. I'll put a bit of water on that. And... Oh dear, what have I got? Well, that's 
it. Okay. What I'm going to do, bit of water on that, and I'll leave these pliers sitting there. I'm not going to uh, put a lot of pressure on there. I'll just... I don't know if that'll open up big enough. The only reason I'm putting a clamp on there is to hold them so they don't fall off. So there's no huge pressure on that. That's, that's pretty loose. We'll just leave that for a little bit. And you will see what happens when metal touches oak. I've done that, done that, done that. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll leave. We'll just do the inside of that. That should be fine. And also the shelf. I can actually feel that when I'm running my hand. And this has been planed. When I'm running my hand over it with the water, I can feel the grain coming up underneath my hand. The other little uh, things, because I was not on the planet yesterday, it says he is right, I'm getting tired. Not now, yesterday I was. Um, was to have a look at the grain on the timber when I'm putting something together. And when I came down last night, I realised that it was, it looked as if it was mass produced and I could improve on it. And I'll show you what I mean initially this was the front that um i did the mortises in as you can see there and so that's how it would have looked and if you look at it from that way that would have been the inside and the grain is running away from the inside because this would have been turned around. And the other side was the opposite. So when I actually came down and had, had a bit of a sleep, I thought of it, no, that's ridiculous because I've got some sapwood here and the grain is running into the cabinet. And I've got the corresponding bit on the other end, sapwood there, the grain running into the cabinet. So it actually, I don't know if we can get a decent shot on that. Yeah, there you go. So now we've got a bit of, I know, I say symmetry is evil, but it's not so much symmetry, it's balance. And you can have, believe it or not, balance with asymmetrical uh, design. It's not about being equal or, um, what's the word? Uh, being a reflection, such as in book matching, but it's just balance. Now I've got the grain on this side running in that way. The grain on this side is running in. I've got these lovely pieces of sapwood on the inside. And with the door rails, I'll just spray them so you can see, I purposely got those with sapwood as well. I tried to get the, the styles with sapwood, but I didn't have the timber. So we've got this continuation 
if you like, of sapwood going on the inside. With these rails, the sapwood will go on the inside, on, I'm thinking. I might have them on the outside. No, I'll have them on the inside because it's light. So you've got from dark to light. And then conversely, on the top, I'll have sapwood on the inside again. So you've got this light timber balancing out quite nicely. So it's not so much just making um, a piece of furniture. That's the mechanics of it. But it's to look at it in a holistic sense and go, okay, well, what looks good? What looks rotten? Um, this, where is it? Yeah, this bit down here. Where are we? No, wrong way. Here we go. This bit down here, oh, I've got this knot here. Doesn't matter because I'm going to cut out an arch so I know I'm going to miss that knot there. Here we've got a, a blemish of some sort or other, but that's going to fit in quite nicely. This is the only thing I couldn't do much about, but even that will live with it because we've got a little bit of a knot here, so it's balanced on that side. I'm going to put an arch there and I'm thinking about putting a carving uh, say of a diamond here with a, I don't know, a trifoil or a pentafoil or something in the middle and that will then balance out these flowers I'm going to carve in, in this end. So there you go, it's, it's just, it's the difference between making a, a piece of furniture as a process or making something that goes beyond just joints um, and finishes. It's, yeah. Anyway, there you go. This, this bottle is really ticking me, so I'm going to put it in the bin. If I need it, I know it's in the bin. And if I don't, I'll throw it out this afternoon when I empty the bin. Ah. Oh. I don't, don't, don't. Oh, hang on, that's what I asked, didn't I? G'day, George, how are you, mate? Sneaking in there. <sighs> hey, Trevor, thanks for taking the heat today. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Apparently, I, and again, could be urban myth, I don't know, but... A lot of urban myth has basis in reality. Um, we had a developer in Australia called Christopher Scase who built some magnificent uh, complexes in Australia through his Quintex group. And then, I don't know, the media started to hate him because he was doing things that wasn't quite right. We also had another chap, both of which are deceased, called Alan Bond, who, yay, won the America's Cup for us way back in whenever it was. And he was a, a developer and what have you, an entrepreneur. And the press started getting to him because apparently he wasn't doing some things that were quite right. But everybody was on... I'm going to remember which way it was. Yeah, I think everyone was up Christopher Scase. Um, because he owed this money and he was in hiding and he tried to leave the country and all this and <clears throat> his wife Pixie and they were giving him such a hard time. Then Alan Bond did something or other and the media turned around and started chasing Alan Bond and he was on the front page and Christopher Case's case wasn't or it was the other way around, I don't know, I forget. But either which one, one of the wives, I think it was uh, Bondy's missus, the redhead, Forgotten what her name is. But anyway, she rang up Pixie Scase, which was Christopher Scase's wife, and said, I just thought I'd say thanks for taking the heat off us. So <laughs> there you go, Trevor, you've taken the heat off me for a while. They're all up your nut. Oh, I thought it was the missus. It's not, it's a young fella. How you going, Ant? What's happening down here? You just come down to say hi, or you're going to do something, or what's your go? Just came down to say hi. Say hi, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Come, look at this. Look, I've got to reach out and put my arm around him now. 
I dear idea. So let me ask you an important question. What? Any chocolate left? Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. How big was the Easter egg you scoffed the other day? Show them. That, that big? <laughs> and yeah, I reckon we'd put an extra couple of inches on you. It's good. <laughs> I do not grow with chocolate. Oh, don't you? Well, hang on, here's an experiment. Why don't we stop feeding you chocolate and see if you don't grow? Do you want to go down that road? No. no. Did you have tacos last night? Yes. I did too. How many did you have? I had six. I think I had about five. Oh, yeah. Oh, I beat Anthony on the taco steaks. I was I was just so hungry. I'm trying to look at my collar there. It was all gone for woofy. Mm. Ugh. So, um, how did you go with your scythe? Did you... Uh, I'm going to need your help just setting up. The, I completely forgot how to do what we were doing. You mean... Oh, because you want that swivel head? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Nah. All right, after the stream, Nanny says I can only stream till 12 and she's going to jump on my head. Fair enough. What have we got? We've got anyone saying, oh, I've got, I'm down on chat, so I've got to catch up. Fair enough. So what were you planning to do today? Oh, I just watered down those backing boards, which are dry now, so we can sand those. That's the front of the cabinet. That's the face you to go on it. Yep. We're going to do a little bit of work on the boxes if I get around to it. I'm going to get all the ridges off my scythe blade. I've got to come back down and use the... Oh, use the bobbin sander. That's all right. You can use that. Um, if you like, you can put a bigger bobbin on it. Uh, probably do that. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, no. If you do use the spoke show. That will do that. We'll, we'll brighten one of H&T Gordon's... No, oh, I'm not letting you use H&T Gordon. No, we'll brighten up Stanley spoke show. And we can do that. It is no... Dry. Oh, that's what I've got to do too. I've got to make a plywood... Um, what are they called? Template. Template. See, the boy's learning. He, there you go. I have to make a template for everything I make. Why? Because if I lose it, if I break whatever I made, I can make another one. It's easy. I don't have to go through the entire process again. That's me, boy. Hey? I was going to say chip off the old block, but I think it was just a cutting the way he's grown. <laughs> he's a good lad. All right, you go and see if Nan wants some help with anything, and I'll give you a hand. Then I come, did the bins come down yesterday? Yeah, we worked out. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Well, she's in my shed, so. In her shed? Yeah. Oh, I'll go up and tell her to stop working. No, don't do that. All right, darling, see you in a bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm catching up. <laughs> yeah, she went back to her mother. I'll tell you a story about Sue and I, our first fight. I should tell her when she's down here. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Talk about being manipulated. Oh, we were, uh, we were, we were in Victoria. I was... Um, based at a place called Bandiana on the Victorian New South Wales border. And we're living in Murray Quarters, which weren't the best places in the world. And anyway, we'd had a bit of a Barney. And I came home, and there she is, suitcases packed on the front, just in front of the front door, outside. And when I came home, she was standing there. She had a suitcase in one hand. She had John in the other hand. I said, where are you going? She said, oh, I've had enough of you. She said, I'm going back to mum. I said, don't be stupid. She said, no, no, I've had it. I just can't handle you <laughs> anymore. I'm going back to my mother. I said, get back inside, you stupid woman. I grabbed hold of a suitcase and went like that. Do you know what? There was nothing in the suitcase. <laughs> she was tricking. She was tricking. So then I got... <laughs> I got um, contact cement and put it on both sides of my marriage certificate. So now you can't rip it up, so there you go. So that was, oh crikey, that would have been 44 years ago, 43 years ago, 40, yeah. I'll, I'll mention it to her next time she comes down, she, she laughed. We talk about that a lot. Oh, oh you got that right, Prunella. Oh. Reginald, 
sneaking in there. Hello, welcome to the workshop again. <laughs> Fair enough, Mike, I suppose you don't. I remember again, jail story again, I, we just finished this big cabinet and I made the panels, I raised panels, it was a, a commission. And I said to one of the boys, can you just go and put those panels in the door? And he did, and I went and had a look, and they were wrong. I said, mate, you put them in backwards. Well, what do you mean? I said, well, have a look at the crown cut. The crown cut's pointed out. It's meant to flow up. Well, what's the matter? You told me to put them in the door. That's it. I did it. So there you go. It's the difference between a production worker and a craftsman, I guess. G'day, Scott. What did we... Is that me? Well, there you go. What is BDE? Can someone enlighten me? Yeah, and I'll tell you what, he's good with the chainsaw too. He's good to take out bush. He can lift, lift heavy weights. Uh, does that mean you've got the same T-shirt or he's wearing the same T-shirt because it's been washed? Noah came out the other day and he said, this, Nanny, why do we have to wash so much? Where does all the washing come out of? Yeah, their bathroom. G'day, poor man, how are you? Yeah, no, she was. She does things like that. Oh, geez, so we're gonna, we, we, were the, we were the last couple to get married at St. James in Albury before a new diocese took over. So there you go. We got married in... No, do we? No, I tell a fib. I tell a fib. Trevor, we got married in Lavington, which is only a stone's throw from Albury. Yeah, lived in Wodonga. He used to drink at the Terminus Hotel. Could tell you stories about that, B. Oh, so that's a good thing. <laughs> I got no idea. Anyway, where are we at? Okay, they're dry again now, so. <clears throat> oh, dear. We'll knock. These off, so they don't take long to dry. Oh. Oh. Ah. We'll hit that with a bit of 240. Let's go get a 240 pad. Yep, still got a little bit of grain raised up. Not all that much, so I think we should be okay. I'll just show you. We'll see if it's worked. These pliers were sitting on this. So that wasn't, that wasn't very long, was it? That was, what, 10 minutes? Take the pliers off and there you go. That's the black stain from the pliers because the metal has reacted with the tannin in the oak. So if you ever get anything with a high tannin content, oak is one of them for sure, do not leave it wet on a workbench or any metal near it. Even a clamp lying on it, do what I did before. Put the paper underneath it so you don't get that, because that can spoil your day if you're not careful. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand my brain any day. Oh, you go and get a... Yeah. 
You watch Prunella, she's about to take off, she's going to have a coffee. Don't, you better not ban coffee clubs, the coffee shops. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this one. Yeah, I look, I'm a bit betwixt and between too. I, I don't know if I want to stain it now. I don't, whoa! Concentrate, my man. Okay, so this is 240. Then we'll just knock it back. And that's it, it's gone. And again, I said I wasn't going to do that then, now I just don't think I will. Two at a time, like I did before, shouldn't I? You can see how little it takes to do nib it. Bob's come back in. And you might think this takes extra time, but I can assure you, you will save so much time when you come to putting your finish on. Tempted to do it one more time. Just to make sure. That feels really nice actually. I'll just do it on one and I'll see if she's staying flat or not. No, that's, that feels pretty good. See, I don't know. I just really don't know if I'm going to stain that or not. Uh. Good morning, Earl. Welcome. Hope you're having a good evening. Okay, now I'll get Anthony to bring down what he's making. He'd be making swords. I say swords and scythes. Um, I don't know. They're out of some game that he and his brother plays, and they get get out the back and belt the heck out of each other, which is good. Now, look, I don't think you can ever be addicted to coffee. I can think you can be in the situation where you really enjoy having one each day. That's not addicted. It's just having one each day. At least one. Uh, Penelope, oh, by the way, man, what should we call you? Man or poor? Sounds so impersonal. We like to be buddy-buddy. I need... 
And you're the queen. Oh, there you go, Eric. Easy. Done, Eric. Yeah, any day you're above ground is better than below, isn't it? Absolutely. So I'll just wait for that one to dry. I'm feeling confident we're not getting to get any grain rise out of that. No, you can't get addicted to caffeine providing you have a coffee every day. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> that's not addiction. That's merely pleasing what your body wants. There you go. Oh, there was a new show, speaking of Dixie Chicks, got nothing to do with Dolly Parton, that came up on Netflix, I think it was. A um, couple of seasons that they've actually made mini movies to some of her songs. So I guess we'll be watching that one later on. Watching, what are we watching at the moment? Oh, one called The Event, about a, a young kid who finds a wrestler's mask and whenever he puts it on, he turns into this gun ho wrestler, which I only watched about literally 10 minutes of it last night and then that was it, I went to bed. No, no, that's, that's right, Eric. It's just, actually, Susie doesn't, she doesn't like coffee. She loves tea. But if she doesn't get a morning cuppa, oh, well, don't expect to live to see the afternoon. Uh, all right, now, let me get my head on. Oh, look, I really, I don't know. If I'm going arts and crafts, I've really got to go that darker colour. Oh, that's a hard one. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do it, Trevor. I won't make a decision until I've talked to she that should be obeyed. Um, no, I, I, I might still go with that stain. Let me put a bit of French polish on it and we'll have a look. Or a bit of, bit of oil anyway. Oh, it'd be if I can find the right oil. It's the good oil. I do have two tins of raw linseed oil. You think I could find that glue bottle last night? No, it'd been sitting there. Yeah, I reckon it went on holidays with my chisel. Muddy ding, ba -da -ding. I'm just looking for some raw linseed oil. That I know I've got around here somewhere. Boiled linseed, but I want boiled linseed. Burnishing cream, rough finish, no, it's finishing oil. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm going to have a big clean up in here. Ha ha, says everyone. Ah, what's that? Raw linseed oil. I knew I had it somewhere. I'm just going to put a little bit of this on. And, and I took a step yesterday. I did because I hate those child locks. I've cut all the child locks off. So I can just open tins now. Much nicer idea. Oh, and there's that chair I've got to get back to doing too. Oh, I've got some work to do on the... I just looked at the clock. I've got some work to do on the boxes too, so... Roscoe, good evening. How are you? Yeah, I'm not so much fussed with the, the country music scene. I, the only, I think, the, I've only ever seen three live concerts in my life. 
Um, and Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers was one of them. And obviously being a male, I wanted to see Dolly Parton. But to tell you the truth, Kenny Rogers stole the show. Okay, here we go. We've got the stain on one side and plain on the other. Hmm, don't know. I'll mostly end up going with stain. Only because it's different. Okay, that's nearly dry and I can't feel any grain coming up on that at all. So that is good. So I don't have to do those again. Let me put them over here. Side of this. Not worried about the outside. The reason I'm doing the inside is because I've got to stain the, the inside before I put that shelf in and put the back on. So I will actually be putting the back on, then the shelf goes in. Would that be smart? <laughs> I don't know. No? Okay. Just to make the management decision. Bob, you, really, you can get through there. Goodness gracious. A bar of chocolate the other side, you would have. I'm going to stain the inside, or whatever I'm going to do, if I'm going to stain it or oil it, this has to be finished first. I'll do the shelf separately. Then I'll fit the shelf. Then I'll put the backboards on. Done. All right, so let's just knock this off here, wherever the sand is gone. See how we go. Okay, that's done. I'm not so much concerned about the frame because I've still got a fair bit of work to do on that before I get around and putting the finish on. That will be one of the last things that gets put on. See, I suppose I could. Yeah, actually, I might, might, I'm just having to rethink, which I do, I do. I'm only allowed to do that down here. I'm not allowed to change my mind when I'm in the house. But down here, I can exercise my right to change my mind. I might put the backing boards on last, actually. That way, if I've got any dramas fitting the doors, I can do that. But I will check, I will check with Da Boss to see if she wants it stained or not. Now, let me just have a look at, got to do these. I'll bring these boxes over. That need to be finished.
don't think I've got many of them to do. I know I gave them a good crack the other day. So how many have I got? There? I think I had five to do. I've got one, two, three, four. That one's done. Okay, they're all been done. Has it been? Yeah. Just having a look. Oh. Okay, these are the ones that have to be done. So what I'm doing now on that that cabinet can stay for a little bit because. There's not much else we can do until I work out if I'm going to stain it or not. G'day, Max. He just left. Now, oh, let me see. Ba -da -ba. Redneck noise. That's a country music. There you go. Dollywood. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. It might be called Dollywood. There you go. Stain, okay, we've got one vote for stain. Now we've got a plane, plane, we, and the plane's winning. Oh, you reckon? Oh, okay, well, we might be going back. To, eventually it will end up that colour. Oh, no, possibly not, because it's actually going in the hallway, so the sun won't get to it. But if the sun got to it, it'd end up going that colour. I, I'm with you, Earl, <laughs> I don't know either. Okay, I think we're going to go natural. We're starting to win. Did he really? And you know who, who sang it? They're coming to take me away. Was it Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte the third or something or other? They're coming to take me away. He ha 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 to the funny farm. Yeah, that was a good. I'm not going to sing the whole lot. That was a good. That, when did that come out? That must have been the 60s. Yeah, it would have been because I was living in North Sydney then. So, yeah, I reckon it'd be late 60s. Steve, I resurfaced some mahogany. I might use it for picture frames. What finish will make it that natural pinkish colour instead of making it dark brown? Um, am I just a straight oil finish or a clear acrylic or de-wax blonde shellac? Anything like that. <coughs> Um, well, you saw the picture frame we did before. That was just boiled linseed oil. Then I put wax all over it. So if you just did boiled linseed oil with a wax finish, it would come up quite nice. Eric, I've always enjoyed the look of... Yeah, um, for frames, I don't mind boiled linseed oil. Yeah, I think if you've got a, if you've got a timber and it's uh, you're doing a cabinet, and for example, there you go, Queensland walnut. I personally, personally, I like the sapwood on Queensland walnut. This is a uh, what do they call it? It's Philadelphia, Philadelphia um, spice cabinet that I want to make. And I've, I've been wanting to make a phrase, so I might get around to making it now. This is Queensland walnut. The figure will actually blow your mind. Isn't that just the most extraordinary bit of timber you've ever seen? So I've got a few lengths of that. But this is the, the sapwood here. If you were doing a job and they wanted it all that colour, yeah, sure, I would then stain. I'm going to keep this sapwood as a feature because I think it's just so nice and I think that'll be at the front of the cabinet and then the door will have sapwood as well as some of this gorgeous quilted. It's just, oh, love it. So, well, Pennsylvania spice cabinet, is that what they call it? I don't know. It was something I think the, the Dutch uh, bought in late 1700s, was it, to put all their spices. And they, they have secret compartments in them where they used to be able to put their tea because tea was so valued, they didn't want the servants knocking it off. So they had secret compartments. So I'll have some secret compartments put into that one.
as well. Ah, there we go. Oh, well, hang on. It's, did, did, I, can, I can do half of it for you. Can I? No, perhaps I can't. I thought I could. That was Roscoe. La -da. Oh, there's my car keys. I might need them one day. Keep them. Oh. Ooh. No. I was looking for me pipe, but I can't find it. So I could have given you the, the dark timber and some leather and a pipe. I must admit, some of those old clubs they have around the place are just, yeah. You go in there and it's just oh, nice. It smells of leather and cigar smoke and anyway. Oh, was it? Oh, I remember it in Australia we had it for a while. It was good though. Oh, hey, that's deep, Julian. It depends if you are staining to hide or enhance a grain figure. Good stuff. How do you move your, remove your shellac, Eric? Because I show you easy way. But I said, morning, Max. Bob's not here. <laughs> yeah, no, I can guarantee it's, it's white oak. Yeah, I love that. The walnut, oh, it stinks when you use it, but oh, it's awesome. It was a very popular veneer in the 1940s in Australia. <clears throat> um, yeah, look, I was going to say, all I use, I, I never totally remove shellac if you just reconstitute it. Steel wool and mefo and just take all the grungy bits off and then leave it as a great base to put your next finish on. But yeah, a scraper will knock it off. But at least you're not using a sander. That's good. Okay. Well, these things here, I've just got to um, clean the bases off. And che I, I checked them the other day to make sure that they don't have any holes that need filling because we fill those. So saying, I just found one. Oh dear. Hey, just a very, very small one. That must be getting better. I, I put my masking tape away. I'm looking at the clock. Poor darling, she came down last night. I, I did, I nearly bit a head off, only because I was trying to get something done. Here we go. For those of you who've missed it before, if you're doing little um, fill-in jobs, isn't that marvellous? I went through all these before and I noticed there wasn't any needed filling. Now, come back down, I can find little bits. To use masking tape like that, then you can be as messy as you like with putting the filler in. And then, so that looks pretty manky there. When you take all the tape off, you got a very, very, very small little bit of putty exactly where you want it to go. Same with this one. 
and we take that masking tape off. It's a very, very fine line. It saves doing such a big clean up at the end and also gets the putty in where you want it because it might end up not where you want it to be. All right, so what I'm going to do with this semi, or aren't I? Um, yeah, I might just get this board from here. Oh. Now, on one side of this board, I've got 60 grit, and on the other side, I think that's might be 120 grit. So all I'm going to do is a quick couple of circles here. And as you notice, I'm doing it 90 degrees and then the same amount each time. And I, I just realised I've done it twice. And that will give you quite a nice finished surface. Don't do it on the 100 side, because if you do, you're going to have big scratches. Whereas there, that's taken it down nicely. I am actually going to go over it with uh, the orbital sander with a bit of 240 in there. Just to take any scratches out that this board might have left. The other thing by doing it, have I done that one before? Oh, you know, okay. Don't know if you can see that, but that has got big scratches in it. That was when I did it on the other side. So what I want to do is just take those scratch marks out. And again, a lot of people say, well, why would you bother? They're really deep. I'm going to take those out with an orbital sander, I think. The reason you do bother is because you've got pride in what you do. And to quote Jeff Hanna once more, who was my teacher and mentor, if it's not right now, it won't be right in 100 years. And how often has it happened? I know it's happened to me. You leave something, you leave something, oh no, it should be right. And it doesn't matter how great the marketry is, how good the polishing is, how good the carving is, how good the hinges are set, how smooth the box is. There'll be some monkey out there who go, oh, it's a little bit rough there. And what do you do? You go straight into excuse mode. Oh, yeah, no, that was, um, I wasn't going to worry about that. I, I left that there for whatever reason. Um, so if you do it properly, then the cynics and the critics will leave you alone. Big um, thing to watch with this is keep this flat. If not, you're going to ruin what you've done. So it's a very light touch. And if you can, keep it on two surfaces as much as you can. This little bit here, I can't. But if I'm down here, I'm on two surfaces. This, this edge, here I, this edge, and this edge. And that's going to give you more stability. This is 240 grit. And that's it. You notice I start by going to a corner. I'm really not happy with that one. It's got deep scratches on it. 
I'll come back to that. This one here, you can see those scratches, but it's got, there you go, you can see them in that corner there, scratches going across. So I'm actually, I'm not going to go to 100, I'll, I'll come down, I'll try a 180 or a, a 120, try a 180 first. That's getting them out. If I went to 100, I'm really going to burr it up. A 150 most likely would have been better, but this is doing the job. Okay, now if you have a look, all those scratches have gone, so I'll quickly give it a quick lick with 240, then we'll move on to the next part. Where's the 240 I had? That's it. <laughs> Tell you what, it's working a lot better. With a new bag, Go and get a bit of 240 wet and dry, ordinary sandpaper. And as we did with the cabinet, that's a sharp edge around there. There's a sharp edge over there. So we're just going to knock those edges off to give it a nice smooth feel. I remember years ago, Mercedes Benz, one of their advertising things was you'll never find a sharp edge on a Mercedes Benz. And I don't know about nowadays, but in those days it was true. You put your hand on the inside of the bumper bar, it was rounded over. You put your hand up underneath the wheel arches, it was rounded over. Underneath the bonnet, everything was smooth. Okay, you just feel that with your hand and it's all good. Now I'm just going to clean up these edges here. And blend them in nicely. Is 
Yeah, I'll tell you what. And the whole time you're doing this, you're, you're inspecting what you're doing. Just making sure everything's good and you haven't missed anything. So I just saw another, another wee little thing that you possibly wouldn't have thought about or cared about, but right there is a very small little gap just in there. And yeah, look, shellac would most likely fill that. But I know it's there, so I'm going to fix it. It's only a little, little bit of time. But once it's done, it's done. You don't have to worry about it. Because my, most people, I don't know if you've noticed, but they're not happy until they find a fault. You wash your car, they'll find the piece you missed. They won't worry about the 99% of the car that looks absolutely terrific. But, oh, no, you missed a bit there. Oh, no, that's not quite right there. No. It's just sad. I left. Ow, that hurt. Drew blood too. Look, not much. Doesn't need a band aid, but it happens. Um, let me. Oh, I just looked at the time. How far back have I got? I've got no answers to me, so I'm going to shoot ahead. Oh, I, I, hey. No polish mix with wet air dry clay. I haven't smelled that. No polish. I like the smell of that. Oh, I like acetone. That's good stuff. I'm just reading. Nothing well. Nothing smells worse than a septic truck with a leak. Mm, yeah, it's not nice. You're getting morbid now. Oh, that's good to know, Steve. Hi, Steve. Why well, should the square sander available? The sander surface of the machine is much smaller. I've got one of these things. I don't know if I've got it here. It might be up in the... It was here for years, but I think I've taken it up to the top shed. Um, one of those fine multi-tools. They do really great sanding right into corners. But I, I do like the random orbital sanding action. I think Bosch actually, they, they bought one out called a mouse as well. Um, I've got a few of those. I had a, a few Bosch sets of tools I got from the boys. Uh, and it had, yeah, a mouse sander in there, which is a tricky little thing. Could get into corners. But the random orbital I like because it just doesn't leave, leave those horrible um, sanding ringlets. Not so much on, on finer grades, but definitely on the 100 grit papers, they make horrible... I had a car repainted once and the guy did it and it must have been 60, no, 40 grit wet and dry in an orbital sander. They'd just come out 
was a, hunt, a Hillman Hunter GT twin side draft Stromberg carbs on it. And uh, then he just sprayed straight over the top of it so I had this horrible textured finish, which was not the best. Still we learn. <clears throat> Yeah, well, decomposition's a bit there you go, and I must admit, I years ago, I had a, oh, they'd be called a workshop back now, but in those days it was called a Sadie. I forget who made it. And I sucked a mouse up once. Oh, I forgot about it for about three months. And years later, whenever you turn that back on, you still got the sound, the smell of the... Dead mouse. Yuck. Catch you later, mate. <laughs> From bad smells to good ones. Every morning around my house smells like smoke and flame salmon. Sounds good to me. Well, your coffee smells pretty good too. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, I reckon I could just turn the chat on and go away, you people that have a ball. Sounds good. That bro, uh, James. Oh, hang on, I better check my batteries. It's not my batteries you've got to worry about, Max, it's my wife. I'm going to push the envelope, I'm going to see. Okay, George, all the best, mate, we'll catch you tomorrow. Done. <laughs> I, Murray, I had a, a partner, we had a, a factory together building furniture years ago, and um, we had a Shinano? Shimano, might have been a Shimano, they to make fishing reels. Well, something like that, anyway. Um, random orbital sander. And it ran off the compressor. And he was always using it. I said, mate, why don't you use the electric one? He said, no. He said, these are much better. They run off air. I said, oh, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, they don't cost anything to run. <laughs> I said, how do you figure that out? He said, because they just run off the compressor air. And I had to sort of gently explained to him the compressor was running for an hour at a time because it was draining the compressor. <laughs> he honestly thought it was more economical to use it because it didn't use any power. So there you go. It's 
My wife what I, three minutes past, I'm nearly finished. You just, just back me up on this one. I was nearly finished. I've got one more box to go. And I can't even ring her up because she's pinched me phone. Uh, as soon as I've finished these, I better I better go. Cause because I don't want to upset her. And I went and bought her an apple turnover from the bakery yesterday. That was a necessity. It was her birthday. Couldn't take her out to a restaurant. The least I could do was get an apple turnover. So, no, I'm happy. Happy with today. And I actually feel as if I'm here. But believe me, yesterday... I, oh, okay. Now, this one's a problem. This one I'm going to have to... That's deeper than the other side. Got to give that one a bit of a sand because it's no good. That's quite deep. So I don't like doing it, but I'll use if I've got an old 100. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, Trevor, you're on the money. Oh, she's grinning at the moment, so I'm guessing that's still a good sign. I just, I just, I told them, did I, I, what happened when we had our first blue and you were going back to your mother? I packed my bag. I was leaving. And he goes, don't be stupid, grab my bag. And it was empty. So, <laughs> you can't trust a woman like that. Actually, that's the reason we've married for so long, because you can't trust a woman like that. I wouldn't... In, Put her on any other poor bloke. I'll just stick oh, with you. Thanks, darling. And I gave you an extra three minutes. No, I reckon it took you two and a half to walk down here. No, no. No? Well, I was going on Papa Tom, not now, now, Tom. let's see what's going on. Everyone's into me. Right, look, Trevor, run away. <laughs> run away. Steve Sue is on the way. And that was two minutes ago. See, you're good. It's black out of the portrait. This is Prunella. Run for the hills. Run for the hills. But they're coming from the hills, my lord. Run away from the hills. Run away from the hills. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> ah, speaking well, so of smells, what are you I doing? like. I think I'm just doing the very last one of these. Okay. Oh, while well, you're here, while well, you're here, want your opinion, all right? Because yeah. we're we're twixt in between. Yeah, here we are. We don't know which way to go with the stain. So I was going to go and... I know. Yeah, well, you, you're the one that's got to live with it. Um, well, you too, but that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. It's easy as getting rid of a stain. I've <laughs> oh, dear. Where is it? I did a test piece, I did. I'm doing a test piece for you. Well, where did the stupid bit go? You all saw me do that. Oh, there it is, up there. Yeah, tis was. Okay. Now, you got sawdust on your pants. I'll beat it off you later on. I'll beat it off we're, you. <laughs> Excuse me, could you just move your head? If he doesn't stream for the next week, it means I've beat him up. Okay. Now, they're the two colours. Yes. All right. Now, which do you like out of those? It's the stain. It's going to get the stain. Eventually, it would go that colour, yeah. but we'll do that. You like that, just that yes. little yes. bit of... Okay. Well, look, I think I better not finish that one off because I know I'm... <laughs> How long is it going to take you to finish it off? About five minutes. All right, I'll give you five minutes. Are you going to stand there tapping your foot? No, no, give no. It, give us, give us a... Give oh, us no. a. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, see, so you're grinning because you know they're watching. If you weren't watching that, that that's the one you've got to get. It's not the grin, it's sort of a grin, but it's a malevolent, evil grin. Evil? I don't I, think we'll so. just have a vote on that. If Sue's evil, one. If she's not, two. Here we go. 
Come on, who's game? I... Oh dear. Let's see what we get. Oh, you're going to tap the... <laughs> Ray reckons you're either. Sarah Jane says you're not. Yeah, well, you'd, you'd stick together. There you go. But no, I mean, <laughs> it looks like I expected to. Race, race. Oh, you bunch of wusses. Fair dinkum. I'm not... <laughs> Roscoe's not crazy enough to vote. You're a smart man considering what was just about to happen to you. Which I won't say, <laughs> but I'll tell her afterwards. Oh, dear. Well, I've been up there trying to find more scenes that I haven't I... already done. <laughs> and I'm running out, believe me. <laughs> no, I, I give up. I give up. Earl, Earl he's a fence sitter, isn't he? One, two, one, two. I'm going one and five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. I'll give you an extra five. Say you're a sweetie. I'll just finish this off. I promise. And I told them I bought the apple turnover last you night. You did. Did you share it? No bloody way. <laughs> I'm ah. Not a chance. They're the best apple turnover. They are. They are. They're just new cake shops just yeah. open. Just nah, up the road. Absolutely yummy and I ate it. And I, I left the stream and I drove up there and it was the very last one in the cabinet. Mm. All right. Well, I'll very knock yummy. this off. Then when I've done that, I've done that. And then you're happy with that colour then? Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll be up shortly, my dear dear. And that, and because I respect you, not because I'm scared of you. <laughs> you're lucky you can't see that look. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so I'm not in trouble. I've got mission. So I'll finish this. <laughs> I'll finish this one off. Here we go. Oh, turn it on, you tis was. Now go to 180. I've got a lot of that off. Where's me 180? Two forty, and we'll be all good. Excellent. Sure, I haven't got any horrible bits I didn't want. Ah, that's all good. Okay, we'll just knock these edges off and we are done. I can't read the chat with all those boxes in the way. You're a big crawler, Steve. Just, yeah, look, I'd like to just emphasise the fact, right? I, just, I would like to go this, have this go on as a point of record. I am going up there, not because I'm scared, not because I'm afraid, but I'm just very obedient. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like that, Brian. Uh. <laughs> I'm not going there, Roscoe. <laughs> if you have, good on you, mate. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. <coughs> oh yeah, no, no, she knows where to punch. Yeah, no, she doesn't break anything, but she, she knows how to she knows how to harm, does the old thing with the Well you can't use telephone books anymore, can you? It used to be the, the favourite. I'll pass that one on to a Devon. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if a broiling machine's got a, a self-built-in sensor or not. <laughs> yeah, I, I can identify with that, Earl. Yeah, but it's true, Louise. It is. Oh. La da dum ba dum bum. Oh, when my mum's not happy, nobody's happy. When dad's not happy, no one cares. Mate, <laughs> you've hit the nail on the head. In fact, if you're not happy, it's, well, what's wrong with him? How come he's grumpy? Why's he got the tom tits? You know? Nah. Mum's not happy. Oh dear. Hey, oh, Susie was, um, after she had that thing on her back taken off, she was you know, obviously in a bit of discomfort. Yeah, but why is it doctors say, oh, you could experience a bit of discomfort? No, be honest, there's downright pain attached to that. Um, so I said to the, the grandkids, I said, Nanny might be a bit cranky, so don't push her buttons. <laughs> no, sorry, we won't. Okay, well, I've done it, so I've got to be a man of my word. <clears throat> yep, yep, when you say I will, you can continue to. You, you first of all say I will, and then you spend the rest of your life going yes, dear. Yeah. Wooden Squabber, she's a wonderful woman. No, I love her the bits, as you can most likely tell, but I will take her advice, because I'm actually not shattered at the moment, so I'm going to leave while I'm ahead. My dad's always saying, the worst thing you can say to your wife is, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the worst thing you can say to your wife is anything after she's made a point. Good night, Roscoe. I hope your moustache stays intact. <coughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, and that's it for me too. I'm going to pull the shed door down. But... <coughs> Very pleased with what we got done. Hope you got some tricks about uh, wetting timber before you put stain on it. Tomorrow we'll actually stain those end boards and uh, might stain the inside of the cabinet. What I'm going to do to these later on is just give these a very thin coat of shellac underneath to seal them. And then that's the last of the boxes. I've just got the hinges to fit and then put the finishes on. That's done. Um, we'll actually make the template tomorrow. This is a template for a template, this one. And I might even have a trial run of carving this flower thingo here because I might do a couple of different versions until I get the one I actually like. So, no, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And this is, a, this is the Steve... I think the shed door should pull me down. This is Steve pulling the shed door down on yet another stream, saying thanks for everyone in the chat room. Thanks for the mods. You're doing a sterling job. I've tried to organise the purple carpet with the gold embroidery ray, but unfortunately they were shut yesterday. I'll see what I can do. <coughs> but the mods, you're doing a great job. And I don't think you have to do much as, as, as a mod, thankfully, because we've got a great bunch of people and it's growing daily. Have you noticed that? <coughs> new people coming in the chat room all the time. If you are new, please hit the subscribe button and uh, the like button. What's that other thing? 
the let me know when I'm streaming button because I'm here every day. That was my commitment when the world entered this uh, crisis is currently in. It is my goal to stream every day until we get over it and we'll do it together because united we stand and we look after each other, we support each other and I think it's absolutely great that I can work and I sincerely mean this, it's great that I can work here and that there is a community that is attached to this channel that really don't need me at all because you're getting on so well and you're supporting each other. John wasn't in today, so I hope he's all right. Prayers out to him. Um, I hope he'll be on tomorrow. And I know he, he's, uh, from what I can gather, he works in a hospital and he's working very, very long hours. <clears throat> so to all of you out there, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself and each other. Be kind to each other because it's a trying time for everyone. A lot of people out there are experiencing emotions and situations they have never, ever had to contend with in the past. So it's up to us to send out some light and some love and some laughter. And we'll be here, so I look forward to having your co comments. Yeah, all right, I look forward to having your comments and your presence in the workshop at the workbench, same time tomorrow. So till then, good night, God bless, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to wherever you are, and I'll catch you all later. And I'm going to go and do a Prunella. I'm going to go and have myself a coffee. Bye for now. Thank you.